How's it going folks? This week's video is going to be answering some questions. Uh, one in a video response that I did to a supporter, Tyler. G'day mate if you're watching. And also some questions that were left below last week's video where I was asking you folks what sort of videos you'd like to see on aquaponics in the future. Thank you to everyone who did respond to that video and left their suggestions down below. Now the responses below that video have made it pretty clear. There's two main categories people would like to see videos on. One is nutrients or additives that go into an aquaponic system and the other the propagation of the plants themselves. So I will be looking at doing videos on them in the very near future. Another style of video that people would like to see more of is tours of different people's systems. I have done a few in the past. I've been out to Alan's place. G'day mate if you're watching and also Barney. G'day Barney, I hope all's well with you mate. And I would like to do a few more. So if you are in Southeast Queensland, uh, Australia, leave a comment down in the comment section below and I'll work out some way and yeah, we'll hook up a bit of a tour for the system. Uh, they really do help other people with ideas for their own build. So it'd be great to get out and meet a few of you folks as well. And yes, I will be coming to Owen's place very soon and doing a bit of a tour of his system. Also too, I've had a few people request that I do more focused videos on things like the sand ponics or IAVS systems and also the dual root zone systems. I did do a video last week with Steve from Potent Ponics. G'day mate. I have learned a little bit more about dual root zone and there will be more videos on that coming down the line. They will be waiting though until we build the new system and there'll also be a uh, sand bed featured in there as well. Besides that, I also got a couple of uh, quick questions that I thought I could answer now. And we're going to start off with Hanaconda. Great uh, username there, by the way. Uh, does the water get too warm to feed the fish in summer? Now, the fish we grow with are jade perch. They're a native fish to Queensland here in Australia. They do tolerate warm water really well. So we don't have an issue with the water getting too warm. In fact, the warmer it is, the harder these guys hit the pellets. So we haven't had an issue with that. There are some species though, like trout. Trout do not like warm water at all. In fact, they can start dying off when the water temperature hits the low to mid 20s, uh, Celsius that is. So there are some species you do need to be aware of that with, but for our jade perch, there's not an issue. It really comes down to knowing what your climate is and then asking at the hatcheries, the local hatcheries or the local enthusiast clubs, uh, what fish best suits your area. And now to a regular Jennifer. G'day Jennifer, hope you're doing well. Uh, she's asked a while back, you mentioned harvesting the fish. Would winter be a good time to do it as they're not eating much and adding much to the system? Doing a large harvest now probably wouldn't be a good idea for us because we are in winter and the fish aren't feeding as heavily as they are in the warmer months. So we're not getting a large amount of ammonia or as large as we normally would going through the system. So probably not a good idea to do a large harvest now. Now recently I have promised to do a fish harvesting video so Bianca and I will get ourselves organized and we'll get down here and harvest one very soon and cook it up and um, those videos will be coming to YouTube down the track. Um, but yeah, as, as for your question Jennifer, probably not a great idea to take too many out of the system at this point but as soon as spring hits and the feed goes in there, yeah we could probably get away with harvesting about half of them and the plants in the system would still tick over as well as they are at the moment. Now Mitch has left a comment and I'll read it out. Uh, controversial opinion but I think I'd like you to do a system that is entirely dealing with the ups and downs of maintain maintenance of peaponics. Peaponics for you folks who um, aren't aware is basically growing your own produce with urine. Uh, a lot of people may feel a little bit squeamish about this, uh, the prospects of doing that. But when you consider the uh, different animal manures and even horse bedding, which is very urine rich that people use as mulch and around the garden, um, a lot of us are dealing with animal waste already. We're just another animal. And now human urine does come out of the body fairly sterile. There are contaminants that picks up on the way. And um, if you're not too healthy, um, there can be issues with that as well. But generally speaking, um, urine, once stored for six months in a sealed container, uh, pretty much all kills off any pathogens that are in there. And then you can dose it up and use it as a fertilizer around your soil patch or in a peaponic system. Now I have run a peaponic system before. I've grown some awesome chard in there, some herbs and other bits and pieces. And I've actually been planning to do a video on it again. I've started making preparations about a year ago when I started collecting my own urine. So there 
there will be a Peaponics video coming to the uh, channel very soon. Uh, probably not one for you folks who are a little bit squeamish, but I can assure you uh, it is a very safe way to grow as long as you take the right safety precautions collecting, storing and preparing the urine. So if you want to see that video and you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and jump on over to the bell icon and you too can see how you can grow your own food using your own urine. Um, now, uh, what I think we might do from there is we might move on and give you a bit of a look at a video I shot for a supporter who bought our guide. He had a couple of questions about radial flow settlers and biofilters and on the guide you can actually ask for some advice by hitting a little button there. Thought it would be a lot easier to uh, just shoot a video so here we go. Here's a response to uh, Tyler's question asking about radial flow settlers and biofilters. G'day Tyler, thought it'd be easier if I just shot a little bit of a video explaining what I meant rather than sitting there and try and work it all out on the keyboard. Uh, so we'll flip this camera around and have a bit of a look at the radial flow settler. Just before we get cracking on the radial flow settler pointers mate, I thought I'd mention um, your fish tank. It looks like it's, it's very slim which means it gives you a lot of room but it looks also looks like it's rather tall. This one here is about four and a half feet and yours looks like it may be around about six foot tall. You might have a few issues just trying to reach to the bottom of the fish tank. Uh, there's the sleepy jades. Um, you may have a few issues trying to reach the bottom of the fish tank um, when it comes time to harvest or to do any maintenance. So uh, just a bit of a pointer there. Maybe um, keep in mind that you might need some sort of a step or something like that in front of it. Uh, just so you can get up and over the edge. I may be wrong as well. It's just what it looked like from the photo. Uh, the radial flow settler. I uh, can't really give you measurements for pipe work leading into it and things like that because I don't know where you're going to be having your outlet for your solids or lifting pipe. Uh, but I can give you a couple of pointers here. With the radial flow settler, it's a good idea to have your inlet come in under the halfway mark. The reason being is you want as long a stilling well as possible. That's the center well there. So when the water redirects down, it slows the velocity. So it's a good idea to have that as long as possible and that's why I have it coming in so low. And as for the outlet, I try and keep it up as high as possible so I can have a maximum level in there. I know it's um, not very, you know, not too helpful in the measurement department, but it's just basically a little bit of a rule of thumb and that will get you by as long as you can go down that low. Now as to why I've got it raised on the bricks, um, it was originally just to show people that you can empty it into a bucket. I had a couple of squat buckets and that was the main idea behind having it raised up. You don't have to. Uh, I do like the idea of using a pump though to uh, evacuate the solids out of it, especially if you're going to be mineralizing them in another tank. Um, as you may be aware, ours is nice and high and off to one side. So I just put that pipe work straight onto that pump and I can pump those solids up there when it comes time to cleaning them out. I definitely would recommend some sort of bleed offline. It goes um, just as low in the filter as it does into the sump tank. Acts as a bit of a bridge siphon, so I just open that valve and that siphons the water off down to around about this height down here. So when I do fill, uh, empty the filter, up, I'm just um, basically removing that bottom section there. So uh, just a couple of pointers with that. As for the moving bed bioreactor, well, this one here is very much undersized. Oh, just to give you a bit of a heads up on retention time, uh, because you do have that larger um, fish tank, it's about double the size of this one here in volume. From memory, I think you said it was 500 gallons. This is around about 250, 260. Uh, it, it means that you won't have as much time or retention time in that solid settler. The water will be moving fairly fast if you are turning over the uh, water uh, once, uh, once to one and a half times an hour. Just to give you an idea, this one here is roughly 1500 litres an hour, I think, and it was around about a six minute retention time. Now, the same sort of rule of thumb applies to your moving bed bioreactor. You want roughly at least a six minute retention time in there so the bacteria have enough time with that nutrient rich water to be able to process the waste. As for plumbing it up, uh, I'm pretty happy with this design here. You could basically swap this out. Um, you could make this the outlet and that the inlet um, like I did in my, my old one or have the water delivered through the top here and taken off down from the bottom. So I can't pull this out now, but I'll try and find an old photo or a bit of video from when I put this together. So now I've got water coming in here. It's time to do the internal plumbing. What I've got is a section of pipe with slits and holes drilled in it and an end cap with the same. And this is just going into a T 
that will fit on the outlet. So all those little slips will just stop any of the biomedia going out. And on the top there, I've just got um, another little grate uh, that'll stop uh, siphon from initiating, um, lets air in there, but also stops any biomedia um, from falling through if it does overflow. It basically gives um, time for the water to move from the top of the pack here down through the, um, the media and then where it's processed and then out through the bottom here. Now this one here has under a three minute retention time. Uh, air wise, as long as you can keep it at a rolling boil like that, and you're pretty much all laughing. You don't want it moving too fast because it will smash all those bacteria off of there. You just want it rolling a little bit to um, help get that air through there so all the bacteria have a chance to um, get some oxygen. And also it does help to knock off any of the loose solids uh, because you will find there will be some fine solids that make it through your radial flow settler into the moving bed bioreactor itself. Uh, this little thing here is just a fill port from when this was an a uh, reservoir for another um, system upstairs, a soil system. Um, so yeah, uh, a couple of pointers there. Uh, like, like I said, uh, I can't give you exact measurements because I don't know uh, what you're going to do, uh, how you're going to be situating it, whether you'd like it raised off or whether you want everything flat on the ground. Uh, for all I know, you may even be digging your fish tank in a bit to make it a little bit easier to work with. Um, so yeah, just a couple of things for you to think about. Uh, plumbing wise, I would suggest that if the if the um, tank uh, and the filter are going to be bumped a lot and the pipework, probably don't go with a uni seal, go with a bulkhead fitting. These ones here don't leak at all, uh, perfectly fine because there's no weight pulling down on them. I've cut all the pipes so they fit nicely. Uh, you will have problems with uni seals if there's a lot of weight on them. They can turn to pull out if the uh, tank wall is a little bit too thin. A really nice thick tank wall here. I think it's uh, around about it's over a quarter of an inch. And these ones here a little bit under. You're sort of pushing the limit with the uni seals on some of these blue drums, but it does the job. Um, I have had problems with bulkhead fittings previously, getting a good seal on them. That's why I pretty much all went to the uni seals. Now, anywhere where you want to be able to take pipes off or filters off, I would recommend you use something like these rubber sleeves, uh, just some um, stainless steel clamps on the rubber sleeve there. Uh, it also means you don't have to cut pipe lengths exact. This one here has got a bit of a gap in here. You might be able to see just there, probably around about a oh, half inch. Uh, worth of gap in between the pipe and yeah, it just makes it uh, sit a little bit easier and also too if the levels are slightly out between the two uni seals here, there's one here, um, it just helps compensate that um, because there's a little bit of flex. If you do have any more specific uh, queries, let me know, uh, just leave them here and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. Uh, I think the only, I mean, this, the filters and all that, they're pretty basic. If you just follow the, the rough rule of thumbs, and that is have the water coming in at below the halfway mark in the radial flow settler, have the stilling well as far down as you can to that point, to the top of that pipe coming in, obviously, and that will help um, slow the water and get a lot more solids settled out. You might want to think about tweaking the size of that filter, though, uh, if you are going to run a full 500, uh, 500 gallons an hour plus um, through the solid settler just because the retention time won't be there. Um, yeah, so yeah, hit me up if you want any more information and I will help where I can. And I do hope this video has helped you, mate. Cheers, have a top one. So there you go, folks. There's just one of the ways that I can help you out if you do purchase the guide. I uh, do keep in mind though, not every question um, requires me to do a video response. But if it is easier for me to do, I've got no problems doing that, um, showing you uh, examples either from my system or previous work I've captured on video before. So uh, it's just one of the perks of the guide, two free questions. Hopefully if you do have any issues, you can, we can sort them out with the two free questions you get over there. And I do tend to uh, leave those um, threads open until people have sorted their issues out so I don't close them off straight away. After those two free ones, there is a small charge if you need further help. Um, so yeah, if you want to check out the guide, by the way, there is a link down below and one will pop up in a little button at the end of the video here. Just quickly before we go, I also did a hangout with Steve from Potent Ponics yesterday over on his podcast. There will be a link to the YouTube version uh, in the description down below. Just basically talking about aquaponics. Um, he uh, threw a couple of questions my way and I answered them. So we covered topics like um, the, my plans for the sand beds, um, biofiltration and bits and pieces like that. Uh, my favorite plants and that sort of thing. So if you want more of this hairy mug, pop on over and check that out. I think we ended up going for almost three hours. 
Um, so yeah, we did did have a good chat there. Uh, there may be an F-bomb or two uh, towards the middle or the end of it. So just a warning for you folks who like it PG. And just quickly, I really do want to thank folks like Ramon and Jennifer who come along every week and say good day down in the comments section. I really do appreciate catching up with you folks down there. A quick shout out and thanks to everyone again who has purchased the guide. If you guys have questions, ask over there. I'll get back to you ASAP. And thanks to all those folks who are supporting us through the YouTube membership platform and also our patron site, Farm Your Own Yard. I've done a little bit of a revamp of that patron site. So if you want to check it out, link down below in the description as well. So I do hope you've got something out of this video. There will be another FAQ one coming very soon, but I will stop rambling on and leave it there. I do hope that your gardens and aquaponics are booming and I will catch you next video. Cheers folks and happy growing.